On Sunday in All Ireland final day, Kerry will play Antrim in the Joe McDonough final for uh, with a place in the Lean McCarthy level at stake. Uh, I'm joined by Kerry hurling manager Fintan O'Connor. Fintan, how excited are you at the thought of leading out a team All Ireland final day at Croke Park? Yeah, look, it's a, I suppose a massive, um, massive amount of excitement in Kerry. We were, I suppose, it was something that all the teams were probably looking forward to. It was a huge opportunity to play in All Ireland final Sunday. That. Maybe the likes of Kerry that wouldn't always have that chance. So it's look, it's brilliant and it's great for lads to be there. And I suppose, uh, like I said, someone during the week, the excitement about being there is huge. And then you're so excited about getting there. And then when you're there, you want to try and go on and win it. So look, that's that's what we're trying to do through the weekend. And I'm sure Antrim will be in the same boat. Yeah, and if you just even jump back over a year ago, the final day of the of the Joe McDonough last year, you were basically in a straight shootout with Offaly to see who goes down to the Christy Ring Cup. You won that game. You've come on a fair journey since to be looking upwards. Yeah, look, I suppose it, it's a huge, it's very competitive. Um, like, Joe McDonough is massive competitive in fairness. I think any team can, can beat anyone. And like, um, I was saying after the Carlo match, I, I didn't really take much satisfaction in it, but Colin Bonner be a great friend of mine. We, we soldiered a good bit in WIT together, so... Um, I suppose it was kind of bittersweet in a way and I see Colin stepping down with Carlo after the West Mead game and he's done an unbelievable job with Carlo and, and West Mead as well I think they're they're a very good team Mead are making huge strides as well so all the teams in Joe McDonough can be either um, I suppose looking down or, or looking up and, and look we've had the rub of the green this year rub of the green and, and we're happy to be in the final Yeah and even just this rivalry that you've built up with Antrim in recent times you've had some good games but like last year, they battered you out the gate, three nineteen to fourteen. But this year, like in the two way final, there was very little in it, three eighteen to two fourteen. And in the most recent match where you played, which was in Belfast, they won three eighteen to two fourteen. So you've had some very tight encounters. Yeah, look, I'm fair to Darren Gleason in Antrim. He's um, really brought them on. They're, they're a really good team, and look, they, they, they beat us fairly handy last year, as you said, and. Um, but we were trying to put that right this year and we haven't haven't really managed to do so yet so um i suppose familiarity may be breeds contempt some people say so hopefully um we, we'll come out to the right side the results on, on sunday now look i answer a really good team and, and i don't think for a minute they'll take us for granted but um darren and his, and his background team there are too professional and too organized for that but uh look we'll, we'll look forward to sunday and we only have to win one game and hopefully it'll be Sunday, you know? Yeah, and, and I know in the grand scheme of things it's not really important, but it's kind of, uh, it is a funny thing that Darren Gleeson, former tip goalie, is on the Antrim side and part of your backroom team, Brendan Cummins, former Tipperary goal, so, <laughs> goalkeeper on the other side. It's quite, it's amusing. Yeah, um, yeah, look, I suppose it, it's, it's funny for the outside looking in and, and for the lads, I suppose they're, they're so used to being together and, and helping each other out over the years. Um, it's probably a bit strange for them to be going up against each other so often in the last last twelve months. But look, um, uh, I don't think either Darren or Brendan would be kind of making it a personal thing. It's Darren's done a great job with his team, and Brendan is doing a great job in Kerry with us. So um, both of them will probably be looking for their teams to try and get over the line on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, what sort of a game are you expecting here? Tight, physical tussle, open flowing. What do you think? Yeah, look, um, in fairness, all the games we've played with Antrim have, have kind of been, been a little bit different in the, in the way they've went. There's, there's usually been a couple of goals in it. Um, Antrim have tended to get, get a very good start on us in all the games. And, and um, look, they're, they're a serious team without playing smart and building them up before a final because everyone does that. But look, they, they've beaten us fairly well in the last, over the last 12 or 18 months. So, um, yeah, I'd be expecting an exciting game and I'd be hoping that we can maybe limit the amount of goals in the compared to the last number of times because usually when the goals come they come for Antrim and, and it leads to them coming out on top so for us to be more competitive I suppose we'd be hoping for less goals so maybe less excitement for people looking on you know yeah and, and what have you been what's it been like uh, like having to leave players at home and then obviously the full panel there and maybe wanting families to be led up to the game yeah look it's been um, very difficult even for injured lads like um we had a car forward, Jordan Conway, who injured his hamstring a week before the league final, um, tore his hamstring off the bone and, and is out for the year, unfortunately, for him. So he's missed the league final and the whole Joe McDonough, and she hasn't actually been allowed to go to any game. So Sunday will be his first first game that he'll be able to see the lads in the flesh, though. 
Duffy with all the streaming and Duffy being able to watch on, but it's very hard for a lad to be in rehabbing his hamstring on a Tuesday and a Friday and then be left at home for the weekend. Then. And look, you feel sorry for, for lads like him that are missing out on, I suppose, the chance to play in Crow Park. And it's just nice that they can they can be some bit of a part of it on Sunday, you know? Yeah, and obviously Kerry's a huge football county, but do you, feel, do you get the sense of support from the county? Yeah, look, there's massive support, especially in the last number of weeks. Um, I suppose three weeks of running into the final and coming up to Christmas and the year we've had, I think people are mad to get excited and looking for a bit of good news. And, and, and um, the three is decorated or flagged in the hospital like there would be for, I suppose, the football final and they're running different competitions to give away jersey. There was a big uh, programme on local radio, uh, Monday Night Terrace Talk there, very good programme with all the primary school kids in the in the kind of hurling stronghold sport the lads and, and shout them on which is look it's a brilliant I suppose level of excitement around Kerry and it's great for the lads to see that level of excitement as well you know yeah and I know you're obviously not looking past this game and all that kind of stuff and we talked like last December I think it was about were Kerry ready for for Munster next year now I, I'm not going to put you in the awkward position of asking you do you want to play in Munster or Leinster next year? Because it's supposed to be Leinster, which is kind of strange. But has, has have the GA contacted Kerry about where that would go? I know, and I think the winners, Joe McDonough, are, are due to go into the Leinster Championship. So look, I think the year that was in it, um, anyway, it was a kind of strange anomaly. Like the, the bottom team in, in Leinster would normally play that, sorry, the bottom team in Munster in a normal year, if Kerry were to win the Joe McDonough, the bottom team in Munster would be in a playoff against Kerry if Kerry were lucky enough to win the Joe McDonough. So because there was no bottom team in Munster, that option probably wasn't available to anyone. So I suppose just because of the pandemic, this kind of it gives us an opportunity to just go into the Leinster Championship, one that maybe we wouldn't get normally. So look, it might be it might be a blessing if we don't win on Sunday, it doesn't really matter. So look, um, as you said, we're just looking at Sunday and whatever happens after Sunday then we'll, we'll worry about that you know? yeah and you, do you get the sense that Antrim are, are heavy favourites here are you you kind of feeling good about your own chances I know look Antrim will be justifiably favourites but um, like as I said most of the Joe McDonough teams are, are are fairly close um, like even on, on Antrim went down to Carlo they were five or six points down had an unbelievable comeback for a draw um, then we went up to Antrim got well beaten, played Carroll at home the following week and were able to win that game. So, look, there's... Carlo then went up to Westmead and lost and we were after beating Westmead the week before, so had Antrim fairly comprehensively. So, it's just all on the day. And, and look, a, a final in Crow Park will bring its own level of uh, nervousness and excitement and, um, as Brian Cody said, it'll take on a life of its own, I suppose, a little bit. And, and that's um, hopefully what will happen. And, and look, we're just hoping that we can perform and, and do all do our best and do the right things and, and see where that takes and look Antrim probably will be slight favourites coming into it and, and that's probably only right and proper with the with the results they've had in the last 12 months they've, I think they've won every game this year um, so look they, they deserve to be favourites and we'll just have to try and go and turn them over as best we can yeah it's a great opportunity for some players that don't get that much limelight to showcase their talents at Croke Park even we're probably gone blue in the face talking about Shane Conway in our game there in the last year. Just him alone is an excellent player. Yeah, I'm sure looking at the Antrim as as I've been doing for the last couple of months and, and especially the last number of weeks is you're looking to try and get an age, I suppose, and you're, some of the skill that they have and it can be on show for everyone to see on Sunday, I'm sure. Um, there, there are really skillful players in all the teams that Joe McDonough, like you look at Mark Cavanagh there for, for Carlo, he's not part of the final this year, but he was... I suppose he's after showing what he can do over the last number of years um, with, with Colin there in Carlo in the Lent Championship last summer and in the Joe McDonough final the previous year. So, look, there's, there's some really, really talented hurlers in Joe McDonough and hopefully we can showcase them a little bit on Sunday. But I suppose um, Shane Conway or no hurler playing Sunday will be worried about showcasing themselves that we just want their team to win and, and that could be the same for both teams, you know? Yeah, and then one final question. You, you're obviously involved with Watford when Derek McGraw was manager a few years back. How do you see the final against Limerick going? Um, yeah, look, I suppose with my Watford hat on, hat on I'd love them to win. Um, I had a lot of them in school in Lismore there. Um, I see the likes of Jack Pender and Eirla Daly, the Bennett, um, Dara Fives, uh, so you'd be still close to them for the, 
I actually met Jack Fender this morning in Lismore. He was in getting a cup of coffee, and I was in getting a breakfast roll. It shows the difference between a manager and a player, I suppose. But um, I was just wishing him the best, and and I'd be shouting for them as much as I can on on Sunday, and hoping they'll get over the line. I think, um, I think they have a re- really good chance without trying to jinx them. Limerick are, are an unbelievable team too. So I just hope, like Kerry, I hope the Waterford lads just give it their best and play to their best and, and see where it takes them, you know. Brilliant stuff, Vincent. Really appreciate you joining me. I know you're on the way to training, so you're under pressure. Sound, Shane. No bother.